in this video we're going to go through the lab notes that are posted but before we do I want to show you something maybe you caught this when I drew this I said the right thing but I wrote the wrong thing on these half reactions half cell reactions I should have had a two on that electron because you well maybe you can see it has to be two because it goes to plus two and so we would say that half cell reaction is balanced because we have the two electrons there anyway let's go back to the beginning of these notes So this first cell is the same one that I just used for the demo. And um, the difference is we still have two containers, um, one for the zinc and one for the copper. But basically, one this one is set, setting inside of the other one. This ceramic inner container, it is takes the place of the salt bridge. It acts the same as the salt bridge. So anyway, it is the same thing um, as the one we just saw. A copper, a Danielle cell is a copper zinc, kind of a standard, kind of classic one. Um, remember that where we have the zinc undergoing oxidation, that's the anode. Anode is oxidation. Copper being reduced, that's the cathode. Um, and then just all of these, like applying all of these concepts, um, what is being reduced would be the copper ions. What is losing electrons would be the zinc. And again, this, these answers were on that one I went over, but um, the anode oxidation, the anode is the zinc cell, basically the zinc cell, the cathode is the copper, and the direction of flow, the direction of flow is always anode to cathode, and I'm talking about the flow of electrons, so we had the electrons going from the zinc to the copper. we are actually going to skip the electrolytic cell. It's sometimes done as a demo, but we're going to skip it. We're learning our first electrochemistry in lab. So let's go to our half cell um, potentials and what we're going to be doing. We're going to be measuring, um, so we're labeling some of these terms. E cell is, E stands for electromotive force and that just means um, tendency to move electrons and so it's because of the move electrons that it's called electromotive force um, it is measured and, and again, we call that um, potential. That's what I've heard most often. And electromotive force, um, it's measured in volts. It's the unit. And we can think of it as electrical pressure. On our setup here, what we're going to do is we're going to use zinc as one of our half cell reactions. And then I have X here because we're going to switch this out. We're going to put different metals here with their solution and read the voltmeter on each one. So um, zinc, uh, in 
this in most of them zinc will be the anode and so I should tell you that it's switched in one reaction Um, because it depends on what the metal is. It depends on which metal is more likely to give away the electrons and which one is more likely to accept the electrons. And so this voltage is what we're going to read and that will tell us the potential of the whole cell and we know that zinc um, as an anode its potential is positive 0 0.76 and so when we read the voltage of the whole thing overall we will be able to determine the uh, voltage of this half cell whatever metal um, is going on we have ha happening here let's see so this is the cathode and we're going to figure out its reduction and this one that we read up here is like the total of the two so it'll just be a subtraction problem so here's what I was just saying that this will read on the voltmeter This, you can look up on a table, this is, um, this is for the oxidation potential for zinc. And then this one is what you're going to be determining. This is going to be the potential. And most of the time it'll be a reduction potential, except for the one that it switched. Um, for the other metal. As I said before, when I was saying it being switched, what I'm talking about is that in one, zinc is the cathode. And so the electrons will go the other way. Most of them, they will be going this way. But if, if the other metal is the anode, then they always go away from the anode. So how we handle that, um, so this is for zinc, and we know its oxidation potential. Guess what its reduction potential is? Well, it's the opposite, so it'll be the opposite sign. And so that, that's always true, that these are always the same number, opposite sign. some basic stuff here. Metals tend to gain or lose electrons. In general, they give up electrons. When we say a metal is more active, so active, they uh, tend to be easily oxidized. Because oxidized is what metals do. They give up electrons. So oxidize means giving away electrons. Um, and we already said this. These two potentials are the same number but opposite signs. So a more active metal um, has a high positive oxidation potential and a negative we say would we, we would say small but really small is negative <laughs> if that makes sense um, reduction potential okay and we've kind of already said this but just let's just write this down and make sure we got this this is how you're going to do your calculation
This is from the voltmeter. This is given and this is what you're going to determine. for whichever metal you're dealing with. So if this number, um, maybe it's, uh, so you get a number over here, you read off, let's just say um, you read 0 0.95 volts on your voltmeter, and then you know this is 0 0.76. So then in this case, you would say um, it's 0 0.19, just subtracting. This is what um, how the tables look. The tables where you could look up um, potentials for each metal and its half cell reactions. And there are different types of activity series. Sometimes you get an oxidation uh, potentials, a series of oxidation potentials. And sometimes you have a series of reduction potentials. And you can always tell what you have if you look at the reactions. They always have the reactions over here. These are oxidation reactions. And so I know what which one this is. Because remember that if I, so this is, I could write it like this, oxidation potential. If I wanted the reduction potential for this reaction, it would be the opposite reaction. It would be A plus plus an electron goes to A. If I flip that reaction, the reduction potential is just the same number, opposite sign. So that's why you only need a table for one of them, because if you need the opposite reaction, you just flip the sign. Okay, and remember that on an activity series, positive is spontaneous. In other words, I would say positive is good. Um, if you have a really positive number, that means you have a, a good anode or cathode. Um, so let's just look at that. So since, since this number is the biggest one, whatever this A is, it's really good at being oxidized. It's big positive, biggest positive number. So that means it's um, the best anode. The oxidation reaction is very favorable. You could do the same thing for this one. It's it's not a very good anode. So it's the poorest of these anode. But if I think of the opposite reaction over here, the opposite reaction Reduction is favorable. So this is a, um, it's the best cathode. So let's answer these questions. Which metal is most active? Remember when we talk about the metal metals being active, what metals tend to do in general is be oxidized. They're the ones that are oxidized. So we want to have um, the one with the high oxidation potential, and that would be A, which has the greatest reduction potential, and we already figured that out. Um, it is C. So there's opposites there. Okay, we're also going to look at the effect of concentration. And this is, has to do with Le Chatelier's principle. You can probably guess um, pretty intuitively that those solutions are pretty important and the more concentrated they are, the higher your voltage is going to be. 
but we can explain that in terms of uh, Le Chatelier's principle. You can think of the voltage, the potential of the cell, as being a product. And if it's a product, um, then you can just apply Le Chatelier's principle. If I lower the concentration of this ion, so this is one of the ions that is in one of the half cells, um, that would cause the reaction to shift to the left to replace it. And that would cause the cell potential to decrease. And the opposite would be true. If you increase the concentration of the ion, whichever ion it is, the cell potential would increase. 